Daniel Bryan and the new corporation 2.0. Once again, he got destroyed by mm -hmm. Triple H's security there, the Shield, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. This was pretty much Daniel Bryan being in a position where he had to go through a series of gauntlet matches with each Shield member as Triple H was just really trying to stick it to him. Interesting words that Triple H had revealed on Wall Monday night as he said what had went down at SummerSlam, Joe, was business and that things became personal when Daniel Bryan insulted Triple H's wife, his father-in-law, him. That's when things started to take the ugly turn for the worse. And pretty much we saw Daniel Bryan put into this gauntlet series as once again we see the entire WWE locker room out and about at the stage, top of the stage area, watching Daniel Bryan get his ass beat, Triple H putting it out there. If anybody tries to help him, they will be fired on the spot. Now, Daniel Bryan, we saw him defeat Seth Rollins. Afterwards, he was getting ready to take on Dean Ambrose. They brought for a little bit, but the Shield said, you know what, bump this. As they all just jumped in, they attacked him. That was followed by Randy Orton. Man, I mean, you talk about another explosive ending to Monday Night Raw as it's looking as though Daniel Bryan is continuing the path of the Stone Cold Steve Austin as he spray-painted that sweet Escalade that was given to him by Randy Orton. Man, where the heck do you see this going, man? And how did you enjoy that segment? Um, I thought every segment that evening with Daniel Bryan and, I guess, as you say, Corporation 2.0 were amazing. These guys are just at the top of their games right now. As you see, Randy Orton has no luck with cars, huh? Seems like he always gets spray-painted or beaten up on, huh? Kofi Kingston first, now Daniel Bryan beating up on one of his cars or spray-painting it. He just has no luck with these cars, though. I think that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, here's a question I have for you, Lee. Mm -hmm. remember, remember a couple of months back there was uh, on WWE.com, there was a blow-up backstage between Daniel Bryan and Triple H about stopping Daniel Bryan's match with Randy Orton. Do you remember that? I remember that. Very crystal clear, yeah. Yeah, so I, I feel like now that I really feel like that was the you know the prequel to this angle. I feel like that's where this is all going to stem from. They're going to point back to that exact event, and that's why Triple H says that this is business against Daniel Bryan for speaking out against Triple H in the past. So hmm, mm -hmm. interesting. It would be funny if WWE actually did acknowledge that period there as their focal point. I mean, it's very surprising that they haven't done it yet, but that's a very good observation that you made, that everything really just seemed to kick off from that real event as folks that might have forgot, basically Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, they were involved in this match a couple of months ago on Raw, and Daniel Bryan, from what I understand, he was supposed to pick up the victory in that match, well, because he had got a legitimate concussion, uh, EMTs, they basically said, you know what, we just need to stop this match because he's not doing too good. Let's just go ahead and stop it. And it turns out the order had came from Triple H. And as far as Triple H was concerned, it was basically, look, you're a very important superstar to the company. We don't want to risk it, especially basically what had went down with... Um, who was it, Dolph Ziggler there? So I think it's very I think it was Randy, actually. It was no, no. Remember Dolph Ziggler? Because remember he had got that concussion, and he was out for. Oh, a you meant bit. Dolph Ziggler got a concussion? Okay, I thought you meant yeah, who, yeah. who he was facing in the match. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. They were still high off of that when Dolph Ziggler had got his concussion, and when they saw what had happened with Daniel Bryan, Triple H, he wanted to play it safe then sorry, and he just quit the match, and Daniel Bryan was said to be very pissed off with Triple H when he went backstage, as the two of them were arguing uh, at in front of the uh, gorilla position, if I'm not mistaken, in front of other WWE superstars, management, Vince McMahon, he wanted for Daniel Bryan to get um, 
to get disciplined for behaving the way that he did in front of high upper management. Triple H, being the guy that he is, a guy that used to be a rebel, he actually thought it was pretty freaking awesome that Daniel Bryan stood up for himself. And isn't it funny? You fast forward now and you got Triple H trying to do his best to help get Daniel Bryan over. Now, some people, they will look at what's going on with Triple H and they'll say, oh, my God, it's the return of the Triple H show. Some people feel that Triple H is once again going to do everything in his power to bury a superstar that should rightfully be taking their place as a WWE champion. Joe, I definitely want to get your take on this. Are you buying this or are you saying foul? I sell it. I say foul. Triple H is putting over Daniel Bryan like no other. Daniel Bryan is... He's on John Cena elite status right now. He's definitely taking the throne as Cena's, you know, on his leave. Triple H is doing a wonderful job. I really look forward to where this storyline is going to go. So, and, you know, back to, going back to last night's Raw, remember how Triple H says, if anybody interferes, you're going to be fired on the spot? Mm-hmm. So, by, I, have, I had another interesting observation there. Uh, why didn't the Big Show still run down to the ring at Clear House, being that he has an ironclad contract, supposedly? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Fucking A. Fucking A. Thank you. This is exactly what I said Monday night. And if you remember, well, now you was uh, hanging out with your peeps yesterday, but I put out the tweet, and I said it Monday night. I said, am I the only one that remembers Big Show has this ironclad contract that was given to him by John Laurinaitis. Why the hell isn't Big Show going down there to help Daniel Bryan to basically kick off the union, if you will, to basically, you know, defy against this new corporation? And they're going to have a tough time explaining this because they're almost making it come off as if that never happened or... Fans won't remember that, but there's plenty of fans that are going to remember that ironclad contract. I mean, my God, they brought this up at least maybe the last time they referenced this was before Big Show was gone for a while. And I think Big Show, correct me if I'm wrong, he's been gone for like, what, almost three months? Right. And they did reference the ironclad contract before he went on that little hiatus. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on right here. I'm looking forward. Do you think that maybe we're going to see another WWE walkout as a result of Daniel Bryan getting these attacks, or is is somebody or something going to step in and act on behalf of Daniel Bryan? I am still holding out hope that Shane O'Mac is going to return, or even Linda McMahon, which highly unlikely, but... And I, you know, I, I just really hope and I hope that somebody's going to come back at like a Shane McMahon and fight off the corporation, being that he also has power and stock as being a McMahon and help Daniel Bryan out. I don't know if they'll do the walkout again. Maybe it's possible, but it's it's kind of like re- recycling the uh, uh, you know, not not so far long ago storyline. So mm-hmm. I really just hope it's a return of Shane McMahon, honestly. I'm really hoping that as well because, on the one hand, I think a WWE walkout would be awesome. Like, if we just see Daniel Bryan get put into another position where he's getting a beatdown and the locker room, they're standing there, they just say, bump this, and they start to leave, and Triple H is demanding that they come back or else they're going to be out of a job. It would be pretty freaking awesome to see the entire locker room just leave out, they just leave the arena, and you could just have a WTF moment right there. Now, here's the thing. You want to amplify this, and you want to take it to the next level, okay? What you want to do is sit up, and you want to have all these wrestlers do this walkout, and you want to sell it on WWE's website, you want to sell it on YouTube, you you want to sell it on Tout, you want to sell it on every single piece of social media that WWE uses, and basically you want to have Triple H be in that position where he takes the Tout 
he takes to YouTube and he releases a series of videos imploring for WWE talent to resume <laughs> Their their active duties that they show up at their next scheduled appearances, you know stuff like that, and basically you can have a lot of people wondering, well, what exactly is going to happen with Monday, uh, not Monday Night Raw, but what's going to happen with WWE SmackDown? What's going to happen with Main Event? Now we know Main Event and SmackDown, those get taped at the Raw event, so they're going to have a couple of matches that they can do. But I think it would just be freaking awesome, especially considering that we have Labor Day holiday coming up. This would have been mm-hmm. a perfect time to do it, too, with the Labor Day holiday. It, it would be awesome. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Joe, actually, they can't pull this off because Raw is coming to the Washington, D.C. area this weekend, and they're going to mm-hmm. be taping Monday Night Raw. So actually, they can't pull this off. They can do something where everything I just mentioned, and we know SmackDown, usually there's a couple of tape matches and all that because they do it on Raw. So when you go to SmackDown, they can have that one or two matches, and basically maybe they could do like a retrospective piece and talk about how the talent had walked out on Monday Night Raw, and you can just sell that for a freaking week right on up until the next live Monday Night Raw, and basically the talent has come to some type of an agreement with Triple H and the corporation, or maybe they tried to hold out for as long as they could, but they don't want to lose any more money, so they come back, and basically you can kind of help set up a return of Linda McMahon, or if you're going to go the Shane McMahon route, then you can go that way, because I'm having a hard time, Joe, picturing somebody saying, you know what, what's being done to Daniel Bryan is wrong. We need to help him. Because let's just say for the sake of the argument, Daniel Bryan gets help from Big Show. He gets the help from Miz. He gets the help from Dolph Ziggler. Well, wait a minute. These guys just put themselves out there. Storyline-wise, they could get fired. You know, how do you kind of justify that when if they were going to help him in the end, why didn't they just do it this week or the week before? Good point. That's a very good point. Maybe, well, you know, they could just play it up of maybe they could only take so much and they just decided to explode at that week's episode, for example. I don't know. But I, I really like the storyline you just laid out there, man. That's, that's, that's yeah. very impressive. Hopefully they go that route. Uh, you know, with the holiday coming up, if there's ever time for them to pull this type of a move, get headlines, get a lot of people talking, 